So as I said, we are going to talk um, a little bit about microchip scanning and really want to get into the reasons behind why we make some of the recommendations we do regarding scanning of animals. And so we'll look at a couple of research papers that were published in order to get this information. So the first one um, is a paper that was published by Dr. Lord in 2009. And in this paper, they looked at over 7,000 dogs and cats in 53 shelters all across the United States. And they really wanted to find out um, what the shelter's habits were in terms of scanning. How many times did they scan animals? What scanners did they use? And how successful at they, were they at finding microchips when they were there? And so I have some of the information that we got from this paper in the little table at the bottom there. And you'll see that 20, uh, just under 22% of stray dogs that did not have microchips were returned to their owners. Compare that to the stray dogs that did have microchips, over 50% of them made their way back to their owners. And then we have a similar trend in cats, although a much greater value. So less than 2% of stray cats that did not have microchips were returned to their owners, compared to almost 40% of stray cats that did have microchips made their way back to their owners. So this is important information both for pet owners. This is good information why you want to be sure that your pet has a microchip and that it's registered and the information is up to date with the microchip company. But it's also important for shelters. And this is the reason why you have to scan effectively because look at the difference of the number of animals that will be in your shelter if you, if they did have, if you were scanning appropriately versus if you're not scanning appropriately and not picking up those microchips. Some other findings that they had in this paper were that only about 21% of shelters scanned animals one time only. The problem with that is that over 900 microchips were found during the second or third scan. So it's really important that we scan animals multiple times and not just one time. There's almost 1,000 animals that wouldn't have been recognized as having a microchip if those animals were only scanned once. And the other piece of information that I want to share with you from this paper was that about 52% of shelters only used one brand of scanner. And so we'll see why that's important as we look at another paper that Dr. Lord published in 2008. And so in this paper, they looked at six brands of microchips in four different scanners. They took 10 microchips from each brand and scanned them 72 times in each direction with each scanner. So the bottom line is that was a lot of different scans, and they scanned them by holding the scanner perpendicular to the microchip, and they scanned them by holding the scanner parallel to the microchip. So over 1,400 scans for each combination of scanner and microchip, so a lot of tries. And what they found was no one single scanner caught every chip every time. And whether or not they found the chip actually depended on the orientation of the scanner and the microchip, so the direction that they held the scanner mattered. And the other thing that they found was that the ability to pick up a microchip was improved the more scans that they did for an individual chip. So that's all good information, um, but that wasn't in live animals. So those microchips were, were placed on a table and were scanned just um, over the table. So we want to see how they work actually in animals. So they did a third paper and published it in 2008. Um, and in this paper, they looked at about 4,000 dogs and cats that were implanted with microchips. Each animal was scanned three or four times by a different person using a different scanner. And again, what they found was that no single scanner caught every single chip every time. And another interesting finding was that as an animal's body weight increased, the odds of missing a microchip increased. So that suggests that maybe the scanning technique was incomplete for larger animals. People may have been using the same technique for a large animal as they were for a small animal, and it was not picking up the chip. So we're going to look at a couple clips here of some microchip scanning techniques, and we'll just let you look at them and think about um, how you might change the scanning technique based on the information that we talked about. All right, so that first clip was very short. It was only about six seconds long, um, and that was kind of the point. So that scan was way too fast. That was an animal that was being taken into a shelter, 
that I visited, and that was its intake scan. So it was way too fast to pick up a microchip that may have been there. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention was in the studies that I talked about, they scanned those microchips at a very slow speed. So they went about half a foot or six inches per second when they were moving the microchip scanner across the animal's body, and they still missed some of the microchips. So we'll take a look at one more clip. Okay, so hopefully everybody has viewed that now. Um, and that scan was a little bit slower, but unfortunately it was incomplete. So you notice that they didn't cover the entire animal, and we'll talk about how you actually want to do that in a minute. Um, and that was a small animal. So remember, the larger the animal got, the more likely people are to miss the microchips. So if they didn't get a, a complete scan on a small animal like that cat, um, they're certainly not going to find one on an animal that's any larger than that. So that was not a good example of good scanning technique either. So what, what can we learn from all these studies? What's the practical take-home message? And one thing that I want you to understand is that you definitely have to use more than one microchip. Remember, none of those studies, no single scanner picked up every chip every time. So you've got to use multiple scanners. And you've got to use a scanner that's able to detect all the different varieties of chips that are on the market. And so I've got those pictured here. There are four universal microchip scanners now. There's the Bayer IMAX Black Label Scanner the AKC Companion Animal Recovery ProScan 700, the Avid 1034 Mini Tracker, and the Home Again Universal World Scan. These are the only four scanners on the market that can detect all the different varieties of microchips that are available. So you want to be sure that at least one of these scanners, if not more than one, is somewhere in your scanning protocol. And you have to be careful that you're actually using the exact model that I have listed here. Some of these scanners particularly the Home Again Scanner, the AKC Car, ProScan, and the Avid Mini Tracker all look very similar to previous versions of these scanners, which are not universal scanners. So you want to make sure you have those exact model numbers. So what is the correct way of scanning an animal? So I came up with this acronym of SCAN, and so you want to go very slowly when you're scanning an animal. Remember, no more than half a foot per second. You want to hold the scanner very close to the animal. So think back to the study where they showed that as an animal's body weight increased, the sensitivity of the microchip scanner decreased. So you want to be sure that you're holding it really close to those microchips so you can get um, a good read on them. You want to cover a whole lot of area. So look at the diagrams that you see to the right. You want to start up by the shoulder blades where you would expect the microchip to be. But microchips can migrate, so you want to be sure that you cover the whole body of the animal. So it's recommended to go in a snake-like pattern down the back of the animal, turn the scanner around, and go down each side of the animal as well. And then it's really important to have some next steps laid out in your intake protocol. What, are you, what is somebody supposed to do when they find a scanner, when they find a microchip? It does no good if they found it, and then they don't know what to do after that. So if a chip is found, there should be a plan for contacting the microchip registry company and trying to track down that owner. If there is no chip scan, for me, the next plan is to scan them again because maybe I missed it. So now we'll take a look at a um, good microchip scanning technique.
All right, so hopefully everybody recognized the difference between that clip and the ones that I showed you previously. So it was a nice, slow, thorough scan of that.